Public Class Simple 3D Game Public Static Void Main String Args Simple 3D Game Game equals new simple 3D game Game dot start Private Void Start Forward slash forward slash initialization code goes here Next, we need to set up the Java 3D environment we will create a simple Canvas 3D class that extends Canvas 3D, which will serve as our rendering surface. Here's how we create it. In this class, we will also initialize the scene graph, which defines all the objects that will be rendered in the game. Now, let's discuss the scene graph. Java 3D utilizes a hierarchical structure that allows us to arrange our 3D objects in a scene. We will create a simple branch group to hold our 3D objects. Let's see how we can create that. The branch group is the root node of our scene graph, and we will add shapes to it later in the tutorial. In the next step, we'll add geometric shapes to our scene. Let's start by adding a simple square. To create this shape, we can use the box class from Java 3D, which makes things much easier. Here's how you can create a box and add it to the branch group. By doing this, you'll be able to see a 3D box in your Java application. Let's also add a simple light source to illuminate our shape. Java 3D uses light sources to enhance the visual effects of the objects in the scene. We can add a point light and set its location. Here's how you do it. This point light will illuminate the surroundings of the box we created. Up next, let's compile and run our code so far. Make sure you have all your dependencies set correctly, compile the Java files, and run the application. You should see a window popping up with a simple 3D box illuminated by the light source. If you see it, congratulations! You've just created your first 3D scene in Java. Now, let's explore how to interact with our game. Adding interactivity is crucial for game development. We will implement mouse controls to rotate the box using a mouse rotate behavior. Here's how we can set that up. Using mouse controls, users will be able to manipulate the scene graph and interact with the 3D objects. Now, let's create a transform group that will hold our 3D objects and allow us to apply transformations like rotation. We should modify our create scene graph method to include this. Transform groups are very important for applying translations, rotations, and scalings to the 3D objects in your scene. We've now set up mouse controls for our application. Let's run the application once more and see how we can interact with the box by dragging the mouse. You should be able to rotate the box around its center. To enhance our game further, let's add keyboard controls as well. We can control the rotation speed of our box. Here's how we can implement that using the key listener interface. With keyboard controls, you can add an entirely new dimension to your game. Next, we'll implement a simple game loop. A game loop runs continuously and allows us to update the game state and render the graphics. Here's a basic implementation of our game loop. In a basic game, this loop could handle updating the game state and rendering the frame. In the update method, you can check for user inputs and update the game state accordingly. And in the render method, we will call the canvas to render the current state of our 3D scene. Here's how that might look. By implementing this structure, you'll ensure your game responds smoothly to player interactions. At this point, we've built a foundational 3D scene with interactivity, but let's also consider adding textures to our box. Textures can significantly increase the visual appeal of your 3D objects. Here's how you can apply a texture to the box. Make sure to load the texture image correctly and apply it to the appearance of the box. Let's take a moment to run our code once more after adding textures. Ensure your image path is correct, and if you do everything right, you should see a textured box instead of a plain one. As a final touch, let's implement a camera movement. For a more dynamic view, we can allow the player to adjust the camera perspective. Here's code that allows for simple camera movements. Using camera control, players will have the freedom to view the 3D world from different angles. Make sure to handle the input correctly within your key pressed method to adjust your camera when necessary giving your game a more immersive experience. And finally, let's wrap things up with our game. We've covered a lot today. You've learned how to create a simple 3D Java game, implement basic interactivity with mouse and keyboard events, add lighting, textures, and camera movements. The concepts we've learned can be expanded into more complex games and applications, and I encourage you to explore further. Don't forget to experiment with different shapes and features. 
If you found this tutorial helpful, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more tutorials. Share your projects and experiences in the comments. Thank you for watching, and happy coding!